Welcome to Handmade Happenings. I'm Melissa and today I'll be showing how I recreated Lucy's outfit from the Chronicles of Narnia Prince Caspian movie. I made this costume in 2022 as a summer project. My friend and I each picked a dress from the Narnia movies to make and today I'll be sharing a little of how I made it as well as some of the difficulties that came with it. So this costume was sewn in three parts and the first was the underdress and right away I ran into my first problem which was what color was this supposed to be because it seems to change depending on the scene in the movie or what picture you're looking at and in a lot of these scenes and pictures it looks to be tan. In fact I found a blog post that was breaking down the costume that listed it as being tan. However, I had bought the official movie guide when I was preparing for this project and in that as well as in pictures from, of the costume when it was being displayed in an exhibit, it looked to be blue so that's what I went with. I used a light blue cotton polyester batiste and the construction of it, there's not a lot to say, at least not for how I made it. It is basically two rectangles with the neckline and armholes cut out and then just so the shoulder seams hem the neckline and armholes so down the side seams hem and hem the bottom. The most notable thing as far as my recreation was that I did sew it by hand. The second part of this costume was the skirt. This is made out of rust orange cotton polyester broadcloth. And I used a pattern by McCall's, I believe, as a base. And this is because I wanted an A-line type skirt because the skirt in the movie did not appear to have any gathers. Now, the pattern that I used had a train and I didn't need that part. So I just used the front pieces and doubled the amount of ones that I needed. So this has actually center front pieces, side front pieces, side back pieces, and a center back piece. And for the center front, what I did was I took the center front piece from the pattern and added a very wide seam allowance down the middle instead of cutting it on the fold and then stitched down several inches and used that very wide seam allowance to use as a facing when hemming this front slit. And for sewing the panels together, I did use a French seam because I did not want soldier threads showing on the inside if the skirt happened to twist the wrong way when walking in it. And then as far as the waistband goes, it's just a simple waistband and it closes in the back with a hook and eye. And now we've come to the last piece, which is the bodice. And once again, the first thing to do was figure out the color of it because the main part of the bodice, a lot like the underdress, looks like a different color in pretty much every photo that comes up online. In some it looks kind of tan, in others it looks kind of gray. I think even in one I thought it looked kind of blue. And of course, it was a printed bodice, so that was another factor to determine when trying to find the fabric. What I ended up with is this silk organza. And this wouldn't have been my first pick if I could have found something else just because of the cost of the fabric. But thankfully, I didn't need a lot, so I was able to do it. And I flatlined it to this grayish tan fabric that I had in my stash that honestly by itself is what I consider to be a bit ugly. However, when layered with the organza, I found that it was the perfect blend of varying colors, or at least enough that I was satisfied with how it looked. So the bodice is a princess seam with a scoop neck, gold piping around the neckline, we have this U-shaped cutout right here, which has some gold thread going across it, which um, it is there because 
that was in the costume and also it just holds that shape so that it doesn't lay funny, I guess. Around the bottom in the movie costume was like a gold, I think it was a jackoed ribbon. I couldn't find anything like that, so what I did was sew two pieces of gold ribbon together to make a wider piece and then stitched gold trim on top of that. And then I just added it around the bottom of the bodice. Now this is one thing I wish I had done differently and that is the length of this because I used my regular bodice pattern and for some reason did not lengthen it even though it was more of a top and I wish I had made it a little longer so that I would have had a little more room to uh, cover the waistband of the skirt. And this bodice is also bag lined with the same gray tan fabric that the um, silk organza pieces were flat lined with. For the sleeves I used rust orange velvet and this was another difficulty in the fabric finding department because it needed to match the skirt and for some reason this particular shade of orange is just not often done in velvets. I mean I can kind of see why I feel like it's not the kind of color that you often think of when you think of velvet fabrics. So I actually had to order that off Etsy. They have a gold braid right, I believe it's above the elbow. And this was just trimmed from, I believe it was Joanne's. And they have a slight drop. They're not full on like waterfall sleeves that hang down really low, but they aren't really fitted to the wrist either. And I just did that by taking a long sleeve pattern and kind of widening it at the bottom. They are lined with the same light blue batiste as the underdress. And the hem does have the same gold piping that is around the neckline. And the back of the dress does close with eyelets and lacing. I hand sewed these eyelets using gold thread and used gold cording. I think it was actually for plastic canvas. I had it left over from my uh, summer project from the year before, the Genevieve dress. And so I just used some of that to lace it up the back. Now to achieve the gap in the back, because since it laces in the back, it didn't need to be like completely closed like this. All I had to do was cut the back piece, the center back pieces, straight down the middle and not add seam allowance because my original pattern was made for a side zipper. So the pattern would have been cut on the fold and I just didn't cut it on the fold and didn't add seam allowance so that when it was stitched up it leaves a natural gap in the back. And of course a Lucy cosplay would not be complete without her cordial and dagger. Unfortunately I can't say a lot about the making of this because I didn't make it. My friend gave this to me when we decided that we were going to do Narnia costumes. So much for joining me as I took a look back at this dress. There was obviously a lot that went into making it that did not fit into this video but I enjoyed giving a small overview of it. I do really like this dress and I am planning to eventually make it into sort of a fantasy inspired everyday dress so if you want to see that then be sure to subscribe so that you'll be notified when I finally get around to it.